Today I thought I would try something a little different. A wireless charger for my phone made with a lamination of sapili and maple veneer. I'll start by making the forms. I'm using several layers of plywood glued together. The extra long end mill I needed was not happy with this, but I did eventually get the chatter down to a minimum. The other half was done the same way, then I covered them in packing tape so the glue used later wouldn't stick so badly. Now I could cut the veneer to length, leaving some extra so I can trim it up later. I found a standard paper cutter worked wonderfully for this. Ideally, the veneer stack should be 0.2 inches thick when compressed, so you can't ask for much better than this. Now for the glue up. I lightly misted the veneer sheets with water to make them a little more pliable since the mold has some very tight bends. I'm using Type Bond 2 Extend for the extra long working time. It's probably not the ideal glue for veneering like this, but it should work just fine. This is why you want a very slow setting glue for work like this. I've got plenty of time to get everything just right. Now 
The next day I can remove the clamps. Imagine how difficult this would be without the slippery packing tape. I'm not too worried about damaging it by prying since I'm only prying on the parts that will be cut off later. That's so cool. Now to cut off the majority of the excess. I'll get it perfect later. And now I can sand everything smooth. With that done, I can start on the next step, filling the grain. A high gloss finish benefits greatly from filling the pores of the wood to give a nice smooth finish. Just spread it on with a putty knife or an old credit card. After it dries, sand it all off, leaving it only in the pores of the wood. Next is a vinyl sealer, which is another important step for the lacquer I will be using later. Now it's back on the mill to make the pocket for the electronics. I'm using the form and some double-sided tape to hold it in place. First, we make a small cutout for the cord to pass through. Then it's onto the pocket. The coils in the charger need to be right up against the phone, so I'm milling away as much material as I can without going through. I adjust the machine a few times to get through all but the very last layers of veneer. There's a little tear out on the one edge where the bit was cutting in the wrong direction. I could fix that with some code changes, but for this it will be fine. You won't see it anyway. I took it to work where we have the fancy woodworking tools to clean up the edges and bring it to its final dimensions. I use the table saw to square up the front and back.
and use the miter saw to square the edges. Back at home in what now seems like the dimly lit garage, I can do the final sanding before the lacquer. I'm using stringed instrument lacquer and will build up the finish with several coats. After the first coat, I can sand it smooth with 600 grit. Then another coat of lacquer. And then another sanding. Then more lacquer. And more lacquer. After about a week, the finish is cured enough to do the final smoothing and polishing to bring it to a high gloss. I start with 2000 grit, then move to 4000 before using an automotive polish to get it glass smooth. The last step is a coat of wax. And here are the electronics, the charging circuit and the coils. I permanently soldered the USB cable to the board and removed the incredibly bright charging status LEDs. I busted out the new hot glue gun to adhere everything together in as small a package as I could. Since there's no way to use fasteners, I'm using an automotive foam tape, which is incredibly sticky, but also a little bit of hot glue for good measure. And that's finished, let's see if it works. I'd say so. This will make an excellent bedside alarm clock and charging station with no wires to mess with. I hope you enjoyed watching the build. Let me know what you think in the comments or at least give it a like or dislike. Thanks as always to my patrons on Patreon for helping keep these videos coming. If you'd like to toss in a buck or two, you can visit my Patreon page and help make these videos better. Thanks for watching.